And you have the voice, yeah, you have and the you voice. have the power to influence the narrative. You just show up in Davos, and you walk out there and you say, Z new word is Z polychrist. Polychrist. Was that pretty good? That was pretty, really. I give, you a, I give you a B plus anyway, on that. Okay, that's pretty good. By the way, if you think you're just gonna wait, and I'll just I'll just ride it out and wait and, and choose then. No, you got better. You better better you shot better on get this right end. now when Grace is yeah. still here. You, 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 know, you, you think this is bad? <laughs> no, yeah. no, this ain't bad. Even everything Klaus Schwab is saying he can do, this that ain't nothing ain't compared nothing. to what you'd have to go through. No. Choose Jesus now. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and tonight we're going to have an unbelievable discussion. Certainly, the things that are happening around the world is going to shock you. It's the world on the brink, on the brink of maybe everything. And I've learned a new word tonight from my uh, co-host. It's going to help me in just a moment. That's called polycrisis. What? Well, let me tell you all about it. First of all, let's introduce our guest tonight who is going to co-host with us, and you guys know him from the big picture. It's Bishop Larry Raglan. Thank you, Pastor Paul. All what right, and high five and across the yes, screen. Hey, we yes, can do that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the Sons of Thunder are oh, on YouTube my. tonight. Y'all better oh, look out. Oh, my. Oh, my. Bishop was in, uh, he's in town here. We were in Orlando this morning preaching over at uh, Judah. Judah Church, Bishop Clint Brown's church. And man, we, we had church up in that place. Oh, it I guarantee it. I love my Judah family. I was also down here for a convention. But when I was like, if I'm going to be in Orlando, I'm this close to the villages. You got to come to the villages. close to the coming apocalypse. I got to go be <laughs> with my, my friend, Pastor Paul. Amen, amen. And another, uh, just some more information, but uh, Bishop Larry and his wife, Sandy, she's in the studio today as well. And even your book editor's in here tonight. Yes, that's right. Okay. Great to very, have you here. Very honored to have Jerry with us. Jerry with us tonight. Um, but one week from now, we're leaving. What? On a jet plane. I don't know if we'll ever get back here again. <laughs> we're on our way to Israel together. Woo! It's going to be amazing. I can't even believe it. I can't believe it's it. Just, it's just, you know, this is shocking to a lot of people because I've been preaching for over 30 years, almost 32 years, I've never been to Israel, Pastor. Yeah. My, and my first ever time to go to Israel, you can't go to Israel. If you're going to go your first time or your 10th time, you got to go with Pastor Paul. That's Dad. right, right. And that's, that's right. what I chose to do. Amen. Well, it looks like there's about 64 or so going to go with us, so we're going to have an unbelievable wow. time in the wow. Lord. Wow. And um, Bishop's going to be involved in everything. He's going to be doing some filming for his show there. He's going to be helping baptize in the Jordan River. Mm, wow. I don't know what all he's going to get into, okay? But it'll get documented. It'll get recorded. It'll get filmed. We're going to be broadcasting from Jerusalem live. And right now, Bishop, there is yeah. some things. I mean, yeah. what a timing. Oh. What timing for us to go when it, it's like the whole world is now hinging on what's going on in Jerusalem. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's the center of the world. It is. Geographically and everything, but it's also the center of the mind of the world. Amen. It's the center of the conflict of the world. Amen. And it's the center of the future world. Amen. I mean, that's where we're, for the believers, where we're going to live for all eternity. That's where the battle of Armageddon is going to happen. That's where the, uh, the abomination of desolation with the Antichrist is going to happen. Everything points to Israel, and as you said, Pastor Paul, there's never been a better time to have your feet on the ground in the holy ground than right. Amen, now. amen. So we're going to be getting ready to go here in a few days, and and uh, we will be. You'll be able to watch our shows from Jerusalem wow. um, live sometimes, or, or there'll be certainly videos being posted as well. And uh, it's going to be an unbelievable yeah. trip, and and it's been three years since I've been there, so a lot has happened. Yeah, yeah. Just in the last three years. Uh, but let's talk tonight, uh, Bishop. Let's talk okay. about the fact that uh, Israel, it just came out today and it looks like it's been confirmed now that last night Israel attacked Iran. Wow. Uh, reports are there's as many as seven different explosions. Mainly, though, there was a, a military installation there, a, a, a ammunition depot there that was hosting or had a lot of these killer drones in it. Yep. And these drones is what Iran has been supplying Russia with to use in the battle with Ukraine. Wow. So somebody went in there mm. and really blew these things up. And we're hearing now that it is Israel that did it yeah. with probably the backing of the United States. Well, that's what I was going to say is uh, I don't think Israel 
would do something on that level if there had not been pre-discussions uh, with other superpowers and even NATO countries. I mean, I'm speculating on this, but yep. immediately when Sandy and I was seeing this breaking, we were looking at it and we were thinking, okay, that, you know, of course my show is called The Big Picture, so I'm always talking about what's the big picture here? What's right. the big picture? So, of course we know that Israel is going to defend their homeland. We, is, if the intelligence comes back that, you know, they were planning attacks and all this, Benjamin Netanyahu and Israel are going to do preemptive whatever they got to do. They're going to protect their nation. But this is a bigger picture here. This, this is, as you said, this is tied to what's happening in Ukraine. This is tied to NATO and United States and so forth. We know that. Israel is the one that's the, that is putting the finger on doing it. But I believe in the coming weeks, Pastor, we're going we're gonna to begin to see and hear people on the ground. It's going to tell us a little bit more details of what was actually going on. And uh, we're going to see that it was much bigger than what we thought. Oh, big time, big time. And uh, from what I'm understanding, uh, this on this trip, this tour of folks we're bringing with us to Israel, we also have some really good connections with the IDF. And uh, so we're going to get some inside information. I mean, we certainly aren't going to get anything classified, but we are going to get some really good inside information yep. that's going to help yep. us to bring to you yep. to stay on top of what's going on. And before this uh, ex, uh, attack by Israel on Iran's military installations. There had been an earthquake that hit oh, yeah. Iran. Yeah. It was only a 5.9, but we understand there's three people dead, 800 injured. Wow. Uh, it was uh, very shallow, and it was just about three or four hours before Israel went into attack. And yeah. I think there's some question is, yeah. is it possible that the earthquake was caused by an underground detonation? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's that's there's speculation. There are people that are saying that is because, you know, it's very convenient to call it an earthquake. But the reality is this, whether if there was some kind of very, very intense explosion, it would show up on the Richter scale as well as as very easily to be able to say the seismic activity of an earthquake, not saying it wasn't an earthquake. And I also know that some of the plate thing, the plates can be triggered by explosion. Exactly. So there, there are some reports on the ground, whether true or not, that that's maybe even a preemptive strike before the drone strikes may have triggered either some type of storage facility that was a massive My, explosion. That exploded under, underground. Underground right. to trigger that or something, an explosion triggered the plates or something. Yeah. But there are some people that are thinking that, because it really is, think about it, Pastor, it is really interesting that these happened within a few hours of each other, I, right? About four hours. But four hours of each other. Um, uh, an earthquake that killed people. Right. That was very shallow. Yes. Right. Not deep. It was shallow. Very shallow. And then next thing you know, ammunition uh, storage places are, are being, being blown, blown up. Blown up. It's, hey. Now, there is still a possibility that God, who said in his word that if you're a, you know, if you bless Israel, he will bless you. But right. if you curse Israel, you'll be cursed. Say it, Pastor. It's very possible that God sent the earthquake wow. just a few hours ahead of the yeah. attack. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. rule that out for sure. Either. You're right. And uh, because I've seen so many times, Larry, I've seen so many strange things where <clears throat> I remember one time they were, when, it's, when it comes, especially Israel, I remember a few years ago that President Obama uh, wanted to get a, resolu a resolution passed in the UN to divide the land of Israel. Yep. And the day before they were going to vote on this, an earthquake hit in Washington, mm. D.C. And it, it cracked the foundation of the Washington Monument. Yep, yep, sure it did. It knocked the artwork off the walls in yep. the Capitol. Yep, think about uh, it. It knocked three stone crosses off the National Cathedral in Washington. Wow. And for some reason, it shook the United Nation building, and people were running in the streets in New York City, thought that the world, they thought it was the apocalypse. Wow, wow. There's no question God was sending a message, yes. don't mess yes. with my people yes. or my land. yes. And so I don't know. God might have sent this. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that God sent the earthquake. I'm not gonna say that it was done under underground. Yeah. It yeah. could have easily been yeah. underground. Yeah. But I tell you what. Well, the truth is, Pastor. How are we gonna really know? We don't. Because the truth. That's that's why shows like this is important. Because this is where you're going to get what you're not getting anywhere else. The right. narrative. If if any of those scenarios that we just said is the truth. That's what happened. You're not going to hear it on the mainstream. No. You're not going to hear it because they're not going to give you anything that is going to bless Israel. Right. That Israel is somehow the chosen Have of it. God. 
And so you're not going to hear that. No, so. Yeah, because here you are, you have a, uh, you have a supernatural earthquake that yeah. sends a message, and then right. you have the attack. Right. And here's the thing. This happens the day after mm. an attack on the synagogue in right. Jerusalem. Yep. Where a gunman goes in and kills seven uh, worshipers and, and injures another ten. And uh, this hap and there hadn't been a shooting like that at all in Jerusalem in, in I don't know, 15 years, wow. maybe. Wow. So this is really strange. It's, and the very next day, these things happen in Iran. Well, the, the one thing about it that is 100% sure, what, whatever the reason and the origins of the attacks in Israel, the uh, things that are happening in Iraq and many, uh, Iran, excuse me, and in different parts around the world, if you can't, even if you can't pigeonhole and identify exactly what it is, the devil knows that time is running out. Amen. And, and what is sad is most people in the church don't want to see that. No, but no. But the enemy knows that. The enemy knows that his time is limited. So when you are back against the wall and you know, it, let's be honest, the, the devil knows the Bible more, better than most Christians. Yeah. So he can read the signs of the times. He knows that his time is coming to an end. So what does he want to do? He's turning up the attacks. He's turning up the terror because he operates in fear. He operates yep. in uncertainty. Yep. And that's a lot of the things we're going to talk about tonight. Yeah, is, we are. It's just uncertainty, fear, fear, fear. Because when people are afraid and every time you turn the news on, there's a bombing. Every time you turn the news on, there's a war. There, all this. They're so scared. They're yep. looking for somebody to give them the answer. Amen. And the devil knows that. Yep. And the devil's got people in waiting, ready to pretend to have the answer. There's a, a, a sister today in church here at Freedom Fellowship that is going on this trip with us. Her and her, her daughter lives in California. They're, they're coming together. And she came up and says, Pastor, do you still think it's safe for me to go to Israel? And I, and I anointed her with oil and prayed for her and, and some other folks as well. And I said to her, Sister, it's safer in Jerusalem than it is in Orlando, Florida. Okay? Wow. Uh, I, I promise you, any major city in America, I would not take 64 people down some of the streets in yeah. America. I would yeah. not. Yeah. Uh, so believe me, but anything that happens in Israel yeah. does get magnified on the national news, the world news. Absolutely. And people are watching closely. We're going to show you some things tonight. We have a, a video we're going to show you in a little bit because when we say the world is on the brink, yeah. we mean it. Yeah. The, the World Economic Forum just got done with their meeting, so we're going to show you some videos that's going to shock you. And to your point, the devil operates in fear. He does, sir. You know, yes, sir. the Lord says he didn't give us the spirit of fear, Come on. but of love and power and a sound mind. Yeah. Yeah. And so we need to understand it. But let me ask you this question. What are the odds of Anthony Blinken... The Secretary of State was also in the Middle East. He was in Cairo, Egypt, while these attacks were going on in Iran. And tomorrow he's getting on a plane and he's flying to Jerusalem. So is there some uh, kind of coordination going on here? Well, I think the answer to that is yes. <laughs> yeah. I think the answer is obviously yes. It's not just a coincidence, okay. you're it's, saying? It's not a coincidence. Okay, I'm sorry. It's not, there's, listen, there's zero. I mean zero chance that a man of high level of our cabinet in the Middle East was not briefed that this was coming. Of course. There's just no, no way. way. There's just no way. Right. And now he's going to be in Jerusalem? Yep. Okay, come on. Yep. Listen, people, we need to wake up. There, there are movers and shakers going on, doing things right in front of our faces, and we are, we are asleep at the wheel. We need to Amen. wake up. Amen. Well, we're going to talk about more about Israel and some of the things happening in the Holy Land right now. But, and also, we're going to touch on Putin, Russia, Ukraine. We'll get there in a minute. But I want to go right now and talk about the World Economic Forum. Um, we've seen today, there was articles today that came out, Larry, that said that uh, a cyber, a super cyber right. event, yep. some kind of catastrophic event was coming. Yep. And they had talked about it in this this session in yes, Davos, yes, 2023. Yes. But what I understand, and you brought out, and you got a video to show us mm -hmm. tonight, yep. this was actually, it's been predicted three years ago. Yeah, 2020. And we're going to go watch this, folks. It's about a minute long. Yep. It's Klaus Schwab, as Melvin Whittington likes to call him, the head of the snake. Let's watch what he said in 2020 at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. We all know, but still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply 
transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. To use the COVID-19 crisis as a timely opportunity to reflect on the lessons the cybersecurity community can draw and improve our preparedness for a potential cyber pandemic. So here we are with uh, Klaus Schwab wow. telling us that there's a cyber attack coming that's going to be making uh, what the pandemic we just went through like it's more like a distraction. Uh, just a minor distraction. distraction. Do you feel like you just came through a minor distraction? <laughs> no. Just, want, just no. wondering. No. It didn't feel minor to no, me. No, it didn't feel minor. And, and matter of fact, there was a lot of churches that closed during yes. it. A lot of businesses yes. went under. A lot of people died. Yes. And, uh, and so, so if that's a minor distraction, what is he talking about? Well, Pastor, let's back up and say that what we just went through, and he said the words... The whack, whack, the whack, yeah, whack, right, whack, right, whack right, thing right. is what I like to call it. Uh, he said them, but he predicted that too. He did predict because that. Because if you go back further than 2020, before 2020 got he here. He predicted this was coming. He predicted this was coming. And Bill Gates was right there with him. So, okay, listen, like, you know, here's your sign. Remember that comedian says, here's your sign? Yeah. Here's your sign. When you predict what we just went through, and then we go through it. The same guy that predicted what we just went through and we went through it is now predicting a cyber, he says what his words, a cyber pandemic. Cyber pandemic. A cyber pandemic is what he called it. And it will make this last pandemic look like a distraction. A minor distraction. Minor and did distraction. did you also notice that he said, let us... I, 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 I've got to learn have how to talk. Have you got it down, Pat? I've got it down. I'm going to. Let us all talk about John. <laughs> Israel's I, I, I got it. Do. I Israel Hall's got, got it. Got do it. you have it? I, I don't know. Jeffrey probably does too. Okay. But, but he says, let us learn our lessons mm -hmm. from COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Oh, I said the word. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. that, that we could use that mm -hmm. to show us how to react in this coming thing. Wow. See, uh, and the whole world comes to his forum. The most powerful yep, yep. world leaders, foreign ministers, CEOs of major industries, and uh, uh, the richest, some of the richest, most powerful people in the world. In the world. And they gather there to discuss the global issues yep. and how that they believe it should be globally managed. Right which is what the Bible keeps talking about, this beast kingdom. Yes, yes. A one world government, a new world order, yes. a one world kingdom, yep. one world currency, uh, a one world leader. Yes. Uh, all of, and, and of course, a mark of, the mark of the beast. You have to have a system to manage this. Yes, yes. And there's also, Larry, uh, there's going to be uh, labeling of people, identif yeah, identifying yeah. people, yeah. especially believers. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the believers, the truth is you as a Christian, we're, we're the last line of defense. That's it. We're the ones standing between, it's between us and the end of days, if you will. Wow. I mean, really, uh, God's looking at this whole world and he sees the blood of his son still being sprinkled upon a few of us that have been born again. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and I think we're the last line of defense holding back the rise of this yeah. beast, of this yeah. Antichrist. Absolutely. So we're living in these times. but. What a guy. I mean, he, he could play the villain in a movie. Uh, if he's he, every James Bond villain <laughs> he, wrapped into one. He should have been. He really he's is. He's also the guy on oh, what's the movie where he goes where the guy's got his finger. I can't think of his name. Uh, um, uh, what was it? Austin Powers. Oh, Austin in the Austin Powers, Powers yeah. A million dollars. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's him. If he, walk, if he walks out oh, in the World Economic Forum with a skinless cat. Yeah, then holding it's, a skinless it's cat. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's I over. Mean, it's over. Then we know it, we've been programmed by Austin Powers. <laughs> Unbelievable. But folks, as you heard what he said, that this event, now we're going to show you something that's going to blow your mind. Now, Rick Hyde, who's actually in the engineer tonight uh, for our show, we're really, really proud of him. He explained to us, we were talking about this oh, before the incredible. show, incredible. he said that he's got a website he can show us of in real time. Yeah. The attacks, 
the cyber attacks that are taking place right now in the world and shows you from what countries are being launched and what countries are being yeah. targeted. Yeah, it's amazing. Look at this. Look, look at that. That's incredible. This is real time, Pastor. Unbelievable. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Unbelievable. Gotta go up. Gotta go up. I mean, what I'm seeing here yeah. is both okay. two things. I'm seeing the United States being targeted all over the country, but I also see where the United States is launching attacks on China. Yeah. And Russia, maybe Ukraine, yeah. uh, different parts of the country that America. America. So we're getting attacked, but we're also attacking. We're also attacking. That, that's just, when I saw that, and I was like, I looked down there at the ledge, and I was like, wait a minute, Paul. Looks like the number one person that's attacking, country that's attacking is us. Yeah, we're, we're definitely attacking, and we're being attacked. And you can see attacked. where the explosions, okay, if you see little orange explosions. And, and he said earlier today that the entire United States map was completely red and filled. Earlier today. Earlier today. Yes. He said we were under attack like he had never seen on this website. Yes. Today. At the time of this live recording, something was happening today all over our nation and the continent was completely yes. covered with attacks. Yes. So now when you think about when Klaus Schwab says that there can be a cyber pandemic yeah. where power sources would go out, mm. let's say the power grid and across yeah. Yeah. nations. Yeah. Let's say you got 30,000 or who knows how many airplanes in the air and there's no right. towers working and yeah. no communication with the planes. Oh, yeah. yeah. No one knows when to land or if they can land. Yeah. Uh, the hospitals, no backup generators, nothing works. People on respirators. Uh, you got neonatal uh, clinics with little babies. You have surgeries taking place at every hour and the hour yes. around the clock. Yes. Around. Uh, imagine all the frozen food yeah, right. In the world, right. spoiling because the yeah. refrigeration goes yeah. out. The massive yeah. shortages. So, so, so can't even really think right. about it. He was really right. He's really he said, right what he, really he said. said. I mean, whether he's involved in what's going to happen or not, what he was saying is if that really happens, Pastor, what you're saying is true. It would take what we just went through and, yeah. and make it seem to be minor. Yeah. And I want y'all to think about that statement uh, because it would be. You're talking about millions of people yeah. that would that could possibly lose their life. Uh, You're and talking about planes falling out of the sky. I mean, we're not trying to be uh, fear mongers here. But he said it. He said it. Not, I didn't say it. I didn't make yeah. it up. Yeah. We got the guy. We got the, this is where the world goes, to Davos, Switzerland, yeah. which down the road is CERN. Right. And you did a great job in our webinar we just did, folks. If you didn't watch the get webinar, it. you should get a ticket. You still can. Just yep. go to our website, paulbegleyprophecy.com, and get your ticket right now for this webinar. And the There's webinar is called Concern. Concern. And Bishop Larry Raglan here, he put together a, tr a brilliant uh, presentation on how the World Economic Forum and CERN are intertwined and yeah. have been yeah. for years. Yeah, they have been. In, in this little tiny country yeah. that is supposed to be known neutral. for the Swiss Alps. <laughs> They're neutral. It's, it's, supposed to be neutral. it's this cute little place where everybody goes and skis. But beneath the ground... And above the ground on both sides. Mm -hmm. it's also right there where CERN is. And I don't want to say too much because I want you to get the conference. But it in that same city where CERN is, you've got the World Trade Organization. Yes, you do. You've got the World Health Organization. Yes, you do. You've got 33 major world global entities based in one city and one region. Yeah. And then by chance, there is a man on the other side that develops the narrative of the whole world. And the whole world comes to hear him? Yeah. Paul. I know. And did you say 33? 33, 33 major 33. global entities of the world are, are with, with, with global or world in their name are based in Geneva, Switzerland. Yeah, and a lot of them are underneath the umbrella of the United Nations. Yes. So this yes. is all part yes. of this Agenda 2030. You've yep. heard us talk about it. Yep. So if you want to know more about all that, Get the ticket. A lot of you already have. I know you've been watching yes. it this weekend. I hope you've been blessed with it. I sure you have. And some of you haven't. You want to get it, okay? And when you when you get the ticket, you can watch it anytime you want, as many times as you want, for a year, okay? Wow. So you can watch Larry explain it 15 times in a row if you want to, okay? So it's very important you do this yes. because uh, we are living in a time that the Bible said was coming. Yeah. We really are. And if you start talking about the mark of the beast, matter of fact, let's go to Revelation chapter 13 for a moment, because I think we should look at some scriptures and, uh, and, get, and get Larry's opinion on some of these. 
it says, and I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns were ten crowns, and upon his heads the name Blasphemy. Mm. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, mm. and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, yep. and his seat, his seat, and great authority. Wow. And I saw one of the heads as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, and who is able to make war with wow. him? Let's stop right there. Wow. Larry, uh, wow. this is a, a scripture here of... Wow. What is he explaining that he sees? Well, obviously, without going into, into deep, deep revelation teaching on the horns, the heads, and so forth, the things that I feel like this, that we need to really be aware of right now, because wherever, wherever you stand on Bible, eschatology, and all these kind of end times teaching about pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, all this kind of stuff, that's for another show. But what jumped out at me, based on what we're talking about right now, is the seat that the power of the dragon gave him a, a seat, mm. and and what what I, and then right after it said an authority, an seat authority. and authority, great authority, yes. great authority. So this beast system that we're talking about, Pastor Paul, ultimately is about who has the voice, who has oh. the authority. Mm. If you think about it, that is the system. The world that we live in is we are constantly, Pastor, being programmed. Amen. How are we programmed? We're programmed by video. We're programmed by audio. Mm -hmm. We're programmed by media. Mm -hmm. So for so long, we talk about this system. We preached for years and years and years, and we were both grew, grew up in church, and we yep. heard about this beast system. We had no idea that we would live in a world no. where we could even do what we're doing. Right no, now. no. If somebody would have told us this, we'd have laughed in their face. Yeah. But here we are reaching the world, Pastor Bob. Yep. The world. It is incredible. Now, here's the thing you got to understand is... We thought the system was going to be this organization of nations and all of that. And I'm not saying that it's not that. Right. But the, because that is global power. But we've had global organizations forever. But we've never had global organizations with the power and the authority to program people like we do now. So when I look at that and I see the dragon gave power to the beast system and gave him a seat mm -hmm. and gave him authority in that seat right. to shape the nations. I am of the belief that I'm becoming more and more, and I'm not saying that I'm all the way there, but I'm becoming more and more as I look at this scripture and begin to realize that there will be a conglomerate of nations. There, it could be the, the uh, revised Roman Empire. It could be uh, 10 kings. It could be 10 different global systems. But without that voice... And if you think about it, Pastor Paul, I don't want to get too deep in teaching here. That's but good. if you think about it, what it, when we get to the mark of the beast, it talks about really what gave the Antichrist its, his authority and his power. And even the power of the mark of the beast was the voice of the false prophet. Yeah, he does. The, 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 he the, confirms everything. He confirms he everything. Confirms it. But without the false prophet... The Antichrist is, will not be able to accomplish no, what he does. No. So here is an entity of someone who's not the Antichrist, but he has authority. Someone has given him a seat. Someone's given him a religious seat. Someone has given him a governmental seat. Yep. And they have given this false prophet. Because you study scripture, it says he causes all to, to take let's, the mark. Let's take a look at this. Yeah. Let's go back to the, the, the scriptures. Okay, we left off here where it says, and who can make war with him? Verse 5, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things. Yep. So here's a your mouth, voice. A mouth, the remember voice. When, remember when Hillary said, I'm finding my voice? Yep. Uh, just say it. Just say it. Uh, just say it. Just say it. And there was, she also walks through the woods a lot. I don't think that. Hillary, <laughs> Hillary. And <laughs> there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things mm. and blasphemies. Yep, that's it. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months, or three and a half years. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy yep. against God yep. to blaspheme his name yep. and his tabernacle yep. and them that dwell in heaven. Yep. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Wow. And power was given unto him over all kindred, tongues, and nations. Mm. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship, worship him. him 
whose names yeah. are not written in the book of life My of God. the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall be led into captivity. Say it. And he that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. And here's the patience and the faith of the saints. Yep, yep. So the voice, you're the talking voice. about the voice. You're the talking voice. about the, uh, the giving him a seat. Think, think about this too, Paul. My mind has just been, I can't get away from the power of the voice. That's yes. the vein I've that's been a, in. That's huge. That's the vein I've been in everywhere I go and everywhere I preach on my show, uh, at my church. Think about this. When he creates the image of the beast, mm -hmm. remember that? Yep. What does he say that shocks everyone? He causes the image to, to speak. speak and cause. Yes. The, and the cause. image speaks. The image speaks. Not the man, but now the image speaks. Now we have AI. AI. Now we don't know. If, you know, by the way, we are real. Yeah, we're These real. We're, real not, we're not a bot. I'm we're not, not a bot. bot. We're they not. can't make a bot as yeah. bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fast <laughs> boat. Are, are you serious? They can't even do it. They can't. <laughs> they go, the, the computer would kick that back <laughs> out and say, no, no, no. no. <laughs> error, error, <laughs> error. Error, error, error. Yeah. 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 But, but what I'm saying is, whether it's AI, whether it's computer generated, whatever it is, the power is in the voice. Yeah, amen. And, and think about this. He, you don't have a treaty to sign without the ability to, with your mouth to negotiate. The, 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 it is going to be all about communication. This Antichrist and the false prophet are going to be such great communicators. But, but there's got to be a seat and there's got to be a yep. power yep. behind that voice. Because you can be the greatest communicator in the world, but you need global power behind yep. you. And you need the whole world to come together. they got to grant it to you. And right? give you that give seat. So the system is going to give somebody that seat. Mm. Now, I'm not saying the World Economic Forum is that seat. But it is, at the very least, the seedbed for it. Yeah, it yeah. is the creation of it. Because we never dreamed that we would ever see an entity that was unelected. Unelected. That was not a government whatsoever. No, no. That really had supposedly no powers. No. But would be the most powerful gr uh, group in the world. world. Would you say, Pastor, that if he's not the first, he's one of the, and I believe he's probably, I believe Klaus Schwab is probably the most powerful man in the world. Right at this moment, at I this say moment. he is. Yeah. Greater, he gets, he is a larger world audience of heads of state and CEOs of Powerful, big tech, big money, big media, big, uh, you, you know, uh, everything that you can imagine, big pharma, all of them, all of them are eating at his feet. Yes. And folks, when you say give him a voice, they're the ones that give him the voice. And oh, by the way, these, uh, these instruments also help give him a voice. Yes, they do. They're in everyone's hand. Yes, yes. Not mm. only do we, we have, we have instant access wow. to, the, to what the beast says. Now, we're on here today, thank God, and we're, we're, we have a voice too. Yes. And so we're speaking and fighting right along for, the, for your ear. Yeah, for your ear. For your ear. Yeah, yep. And uh, I want to go back to this where you said he gave him a seat, great authority in the voice. Let's play that again. Let's, yeah. let's just listen to this guy talk mm. and, and listen to what he's, the fear, the fear no he fear. plants. Yeah. And if, there's, if it isn't a prophecy, I don't know what you want to call it. The Z, they're, they're getting it ready. But just remember, he says, Z, COVID-19. <laughs> Z, Z. He does. He it's, predicts it's it. It's the Klaus. Yeah. It's yeah. the, not no. Z. He has to say it that way. It's that German accent. We all there. know. Here he is. But still, pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario oh, frightening. of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. To use the COVID-19 crisis as a timely opportunity to reflect on the lessons the cybersecurity community can draw and improve our preparedness for a potential cyber pandemic. Unbelievable. I mean, he, that's just unreal. He says it with such conviction. Yeah. And, and um, 
and the and so it's almost like he's laying out the plan. He's, he's yeah. the marching orders has been put out there. Yeah, a, yeah. Affecting the transportation, the power, right. the hospitals, yeah. the food supply, the banking, yeah, and all, everything connected. And uh, we're living. This is why when we started the show, we said this is a world on the brink. Yeah. The world on the brink. Well, let's go to Russia for a minute because there's, as we know, it's almost a year, Bishop, that uh, Russia invaded. Ukraine, but they actually Sorry, invaded them in 2014. To be honest, yeah, they took right. Crimea yeah, yeah, by they force. They, they did. did. They did. They stuck a gun to people's heads and said, Let's, "Do you want to go join us or yeah, stay?" Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that Mike around the world that we, we interview a lot it, it, it said to me back in 2014 said, "Oh, by the way, Russia will never leave Ukraine." Yeah. Yeah, he did. He sure did. He said instead they will yeah. attack them eventually yeah. and they will take that country. Yeah. Yeah. He said that eight years ago. They did. He did. And that is now happening. Also. While this is happening, he has also mentioned, and I know it's true, that Russia and Iran are joined at the hip. They mm. seem to be working mm. in tandem. Mm. You can go to the Bible. If you go to Ezekiel 38, yep. you'll read that those, are, those countries are named as part of the countries in what's called the Battle of Gog and Magog. Absolutely. So, you know, some of the great uh, biblical scholars of our day, Dr. Jack Van Impey or Chuck Misler, uh, Dr. Irvin Baxter, all of them who went on to be with the Lord, all said that the next big event would be some type of battle involving these nations in yeah. the Battle of Gog and Magog. Yeah, absolutely. So we're right at the door. We're right there. We got all these things. We got the beast technology. Yeah. We got the false gospels being preached. Yeah. We've got uh, diseases and pandemics. Yeah. Yeah. We've got fear on yeah. every side. Uh, and, and so everything you can imagine. And I think it's the new word. Oh, yeah. What, what is the new word? What we have, Pastor Paul. Is a poly crisis. A poly crisis. A po not a crisis, but a poly crisis. Poly meaning many. So when you get to a place where you got so many crises going on that you just don't want to take the time to talk about all of them and you just lump them all together and you have the voice yeah, you have and the you voice. have the power to influence the narrative, you just show up in Davos and you just walk out there and you say, Z new word is Z polychrysis. Polychrysis. Was that pretty good? That was, was pretty, really. I, was, give, was, you was a, I give you a B anyway, plus on that. Okay. That's pretty good. Can I read to you what straight from the World Economic Forum's website? Would you please? This is straight, directly quoted from the World Economic for, we Forum, WEForum.org. You can go there. It says, um, the collective vocabularies stored in the world's greatest dictionaries didn't appear to hold a single word to sum up all of the strife of our world. So therefore, we have instituted a new name, polycrisis. The World Economic Forum's Global Risk Report of 2023 has introduced the word to explain how to, quote, present any pre pre present and future risks can also interact with each other to form a polycrisis, a cluster of related global risk with compounding effects such that the overall impact exceeds the sum of each part. Wow. So they didn't just invent the word. They went ahead and defined it. Yeah. So that Webster can just copy and paste. A and they will. And they will. And you'll also watch and see if you don't start hearing the talking heads on your cable network news media start using this term polycrisis. Poly and, and because as they see different things happening. Yep. They will start to identify it as: Are we entering into a polycrisis? Yeah, I, I, I know I can hear this right now. Oh, I CNN. Can I can hear CNN I can doing it. And, and look, when you have a polycrisis, that's too much for one country to be able to handle. Yeah, it's we need be, a, We yep. this is that means it's worldwide. It's yep. it's it's global. So we need a global leader. Yep. We need a global organization. We need a global entity to go to. And also, a side well, note: Well, isn't isn't climate? Isn't the climate crisis? Isn't that their poly crisis? Well, you I mean, said it. You said it. That's it. That's 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 the church. Quite frankly, that's that's, that's the their religion. church. That's their church. That's their religion. That's, that's what they worship at. And and when you go back and you watch, and I I can't even tell you how many hours of video that I've watched from World Economic Forum in research, and without a doubt, ninety percent of every topic, no matter what the topic is, climate is involved in that yeah. topic. It is it is brought. It is every, It is going to be the tool, and it is the tool that they're they're using to take. Everybody from Republican, Democrat, conservative, Labor Party, whatever nation you're in, everybody's uniting around climate. Climate. And then that, when they get them united around that, then the next phase of understanding, of, of course, we got to, and I want to say this too, Paul, at the very end, I, I've got this, a clip of this on one of my shows too, I can't even remember which one it was, on a Monday night show, but 
the very last forum that was around, the uh, Prime Minister of Slovenia yeah. was talking to Klaus Schwab and some others, and this is what she closed by saying, and this is, this is a paraphrase, but this is what she said. The biggest problem facing the world is the lack of the ability to globally enforce what we are talking about because we have countries that don't want to get in line with what we're saying. So we need to have a global entity mm. to enforce mm -hmm. what we're talking about mm -hmm. when it comes to climate and when it comes to the conditions of future pandemics and so forth. So, so they're, they're already setting the stage. They're clamoring for a world leader. Yes, they they're, are. They're clamoring. They're saying that this is too big. We can't just let each nation come up with its own policy. Right. We've got to have a super power or a super authority yes. to call the shots. Well, let's go to Revelation and see if maybe we can find that authority for them because, or their system. Because mm. it says, in, uh, as you uh, go back up a little bit, it says that, uh, I'll start at verse 11. And I behold, I beheld another beast. Here's your, yep. here's your false prophet. Yep, yep. Coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he spake as a dragon. He spake as a dragon. As a dragon. Yep. Now he exercised all the power of the first beast before mm -hmm. him. And he caused the earth yep. and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast. Right. Whose deadly wound was healed. And he doth great wonders mm. so that he can make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Yep. And he deceived them yep. that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. In other words, he doesn't really have that actual power to no, do it. He's no. using technology yeah. of some sort. And yep. it says oh, yeah. there that um, he deceives them uh, with the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, yep. which had the wound by the sword and did live. So yep. here's your yeah. Antichrist. Yeah. And yep. let's speak to me. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the Antichrist and how does he, does he come in to confirm what the Antichrist is saying? Yeah. Is he the yeah. guy that says, look, guys, we need to listen to this guy? Well, How does I've, it work? I've always, you know, I have a simple mind. I have, I'm just country, y'all. If y'all ain't heard that from my voice yet, I'm a country <laughs> boy from Alabama. And so I have to make things a little simple to understand for me. So I just sort of always looked at the false prophet as the devil's fake John the Baptist. Okay. And that the Antichrist, because he is the Antichrist, which, by the way, he's not called the Anti-Jesus. No. Now, understand, understand, the reason he's not called the Anti-Jesus, it's very important for you to get this, he's called the Antichrist, because Christ was not the name of Jesus. No. Christ is who Jesus is. Right. Christ the Christos, which means the chosen one, the Messiah, right. Yeshua, HaMashiach, he is the chosen one, he is, he is the anointed and God's anointing. So... The reason he's not called the anti-Jesus, Paul, is because I believe the Antichrist is going to present himself to be Jesus. And, and the fact that he is going to present himself to... to as a to, Messiah. As a Messiah. Sort, yeah. And he may even call himself Jesus. He might. Because you're going to have a... Uh, Quite frankly, a, a lot of people that was in the church that was left here yeah. that think that they were right with God, but yeah. they're, they're not, they weren't they're right not with there. God, yeah. and they're here. Yep. And, and so they're going to hear that name Jesus, and I, at the very least, he's going to invoke the name Jesus. But he's called the Antichrist, which means he's the anti-anointing. Mm -hmm. So Jesus had a forerunner. Yeah. Jesus had one that was the voice. Amen. And I believe the Antichrist has that in the false prophet. He's sort of like Elijah. Yeah. He's, you know, because, you know, he's talking about the two witnesses that are going to be yeah. here. Most people, whether you agree on both, who both of them are, I think everybody agrees that one of them is Elijah. At least one, a, yeah. At least one of them. So, so you've got the real Elijah. Yeah. Then you're going to have the fake Elijah. Yeah. Which John the Baptist was under the anointing of Elijah. Yeah. So he causes, you know, all these fake miracles. Think about Elijah prayed fire down from heaven. Yeah. He's going to supposedly bring fire down from heaven. So we see so many parallels with stop that. Stop the rain. He'll stop the rain. Exactly. He'll send plagues on the earth, you know, so we know we've seen that happen. Yes. Uh, whether it was Moses or whether it was Elijah, we've seen them both do that. Yes, yes. So your point is there's a, there's, there's a if we have two witnesses, God's witnesses, yes. Satan's going to have two witnesses, his witnesses, which yes. are the Antichrist, the false prophet. Right. Two on yeah. two. And there, it's going to be a spiritual battle. Yes. I mean, these guys are going to be preaching the gospel, yeah. but they're going to be hated. Yes, yes. Remember, remember this, the, the, the quote, how, when Elijah said this to the worshipers of Baal, how long will you be halt between two opinions? Two opinions. So, so it, it, it is literally going to be a line drawn in the sand physically in the sand. All around the world, through this technology, yep. they're going to see the devil's two and God's two. And the devil's two will have these 
appear to be miracles where they're yes. calling fire down. So what's these? Uh, what's God's to do? They can call it down. Right. Right. So they're going to be. It's going to be this confrontation. This. Yeah. Well, what you would say, uh, the great, well, the great battle of all time. It's going to be such a confrontation. Think about this, Paul. Why, why would you call a global celebration and party at the death of two people? The Bible says <laughs> that when these two witnesses are killed and in the street, yep, yep. They're, they're, it will, the world will give presents to each other. Each, oh, yeah. They will treat it's it celebrate. like Christmas. Why? Because there will be an all-out war between the Antichrist and the false prophet and the two witnesses. Amen. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, while they're having their party, while they're while giving they're, gifts, <laughs> while they're using technology to watch all around the world and dancing in their living rooms... Something's going to happen These on the fourth day. These guys are going to get up. They're going to get up, These guys are going to get up, and the whole world's going to see it. And we're going to find out who's got the real voice. Yeah, we're going to find And you know, think about this, because I have a feeling that, okay, God, why is it such a big issue? I understand it's a big issue, but what causes the whole world to worry about it? Yep. And he says, well, because the, the world will be faced with this Im impossible problem. Wow. And the, these two are saying they have the answer. Yeah. And the preachers say they have the answer. Right. right and the yeah. world has to decide which mm. one they're going to believe. My God. Okay, mm. and and each each have great power, and they know they've been trying to assassinate these guys, and they yep. can't seem to get it done. Can't get it done. But when they mm. finally kill them, yeah, and God allows that, yeah, He does. He lets them yep. die, just like He let Christ die. Yep. The world celebrates. Yeah, so as you said, they celebrate. I mean, they go crazy. And, and but when these two get up, mm. the fear of God mm. will hit this earth mm. like the world has never seen. Absolutely. It says that they raise from the dead and they ascend up into heaven right, right. in front of everybody. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Glory. People's gonna be like, I missed uh, another man, rapture. I missed a second rapture. That's the second rapture. I missed. <laughs> I, am again. I need to get right with God <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> And maybe that will be. Maybe yeah. there will be this huge move of God on the land. Yeah. yeah. You know, just like when how many people fell on their knees when the young man had a yeah. heart attack. Or, you oh, know, yeah. The, Unbelievable. What will the whole world do if, when two yeah. dead yeah. men yeah. get up? Well, you know, here's the thing. The Bible does say that there will be an innumerable amount of people during that time that will choose the Messiah Jesus. Oh, yes. Uh, during oh, that yes. time. Yeah. But, by the way, if you think you're just going to wait, and I'll just I'll just ride it out and wait and, and choose then. No, you got better you better better you shot better on get this right in. now when Grace yeah. is still here. You, you, you know you, you think this is bad? <laughs> yeah. No, no, this ain't bad. Even everything Klaus Schwab is saying he can do. This that ain't nothing ain't compared nothing. to what you'd have to go through. No. Choose Jesus now. Amen. Choose him right now. Mm. Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, I, I think that when you look at all the things, the signs in the heavens, there's a couple comets that are going to go by here. We got yep. one on February first. It's comet ZTF. And it's going to be pretty close to the earth. You'll be able to see it if you have a good telescope wow. from your backyard. There's another one that's going by on February 7th around the sun. They don't know what it's going to do. And we're seeing all kinds of strange signs. Did you see that cloud, a weird cloud over yes. Turkey uh, a week ago? Just strange sights. That did not look like a cloud. No, it looked like a spaceship yeah. or something. Yeah, I'm alien like, almost. I mean, it's, yeah. it's foreign. It wasn't, I don't know, was it from this world? Whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. Uh -uh. But it has people mesmerized. Yeah, it does, yeah. And so we're seeing all these things. Now, remember what Jesus said. He said there'll be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, distress of nations with perplexity or confusion, the sea, the waves will be roaring. In other words, we're having all kinds of apocalyptic storms. Yeah, yeah. I, They're yeah. increasing all over the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, Bishop, if someone asks you, what, what, is, is there something on the earth going on right now that would convince you that maybe we're in the last days? The answer is how many, how, uh, which one do you want? They're, they're all happening at the same time. Well, you know, the, just like Klaus Schwab, I guess we could just probably adopt his word. Just look at the polycrisis. Look at the polycrisis. I mean, there's so many things going on. We can't do enough shows to cover all no, the things. No, You know, and I know. I know what you think. I know some of you were raised in church just like me and Pastor Paul. You heard Jesus was coming. You heard it was the last generation. You've heard it. You've heard it so many times. And that's what the Bible said would happen. Yep. People would become scoffers. Yep. They would they would mock the yep. faith. Oh, yep. yeah, for 2,000 years they've been saying the Lord's coming. But here's the reality. No one, no one, listen to me, no one has ever seen the, the amount of things that this generation has seen. Mm. We, when we were young, we heard about the mark of the beast. Right. We knew it was real, but we couldn't imagine how. In our lifetime, we still didn't think it would we be. We still didn't think it, Pastor. We thought it was out there still. Because, you know, like, I don't know how it is in Florida. I'm sure it's like it is in Indiana and different places around the world. I know how it is in Alabama. 
It's hard to witness to people in Alabama because everybody in Alabama thinks they're already saved. Yeah. Okay, because they was raised in church. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, it, you can't tell somebody they're they in sin. They were like, bless God, I was born in church. It's hard to witness to people. So yeah. they've heard it. 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 We, you, you come to Alabama just 10 years ago and go up to country boys in Alabama and say, you know what? What's a good idea is for me to put a chip up under your hand and you can open your door with it. They, they would pull their Second Amendment out on you yeah. in, a, in a heartbeat. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. They would pull the Second Amendment yeah, out would. on you and say, you better get out of my get house. Get out of my face. But That's now right. you've got people going, well, you know what? Because Maybe. they've been programmed yeah. in our lifetime yeah. through this technology. Yeah. They, they're like, you know what? It would be pretty nice to not have to worry about car keys, to not have to worry about it. So look, I don't want the mark of the beast, but, but I would like the ability to just open my door with my hand. Yeah. We literally have witnessed, we have lived a life, Pastor, where it seemed impossible to now realize millions have lined up to have things put in their bodies. Yeah, they have. And at the World Economic Forum, Noah, help me, Sandy. Harari. Harari. Noah, 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 yeah, Noah, yeah. Noah, Noah. That crazy dude. Yeah, I saw him. He, he <laughs> said, he said the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, the next wave that we will track you is we are going under your skin. Yes, he did. And he said, you, you are not coming. This is not coming. You are already a hackable animal. Yes. He said, we don't need this whole thing that you think about free will. It's over. Yeah, they're, they're we saying. We already control you. Yeah. It's what he's, That's he what openly he's saying. said it. That's what he's saying. And people are buying into that. They're, yes. they're, they're going to sub, submit their will to the beast. Except those of you who right now, until we leave here, I can tell you, until the Lord comes and gets us, come on. I'm not, there's no way. Because we've been bought with a price. We're not our own anymore. I mean, we've been purchased by red crimson blood from the Messiah, mm. Jesus of Nazareth. And when he died on that cross, he did something that he broke the chains. When he rose from yes, the grave, sir. he shattered the shackles yes, that, that bound men's souls. My God. And we're not, we're not our own anymore. We, we, we belong to him. We're chosen people. Mm. We're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, Preach, preacher. peculiar people. And so we're God's elect, the bride of Christ. Yes, we're, we're not staying around mm. to be submitted and to, to come under the thumb of the Antichrist. I got news for him. It ain't going to happen. happen. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And hey, you can stay here if you want to. You can stay if you want to, but I'm not going to do it. I'm out of here. on the first load, baby. Out of here. They need some good people here. I'm praying for uh, you. There'll be people here. There will be some who'll say, why didn't I listen? Yeah, yeah. I, I remember that night. I was watching that Sunday night when those two preachers had that guy from Alabama on here. Mm. They were talking about Jesus and talking about the mark yep. of the beast. Yep. And, and I thought, well, you know, we still got plenty of time. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You don't know. We don't have any promise. This yeah. could be the last show I do. Yeah, that's right. This could be it. Maybe this is it. Yep. Maybe in the wow. morning when you wake up, billions of people are gone. Yeah. And there's a whole chaotic world, a polycrisis, if yep, you will. Yep, yep. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ. Uh, Bishop, I believe we're going to play a song. Okay. And before we do, would you speak to the hearts of the folks that are there and, and, and let them know what they need to do to give their life to Christ? Yeah, well, you just said something, Pastor, that made me really think about this, is uh, when you said this could be our last show, I, it hit me because I've thought this many times. This is not... This is not a hypothesis. This is not a theory. This is a fact, what I'm about to tell you. I don't know who it is. It may be me. It could literally be me. It could be somebody in this studio right now. But there is someone, man or woman, old or young, that is watching this show right now that is absolutely closer to death than anybody else. Well, that's true. Somebody. Somebody is. Somebody is. And we, we may never know who it is. We probably won't know who it is. But there is somebody that is watching this right now and I, I don't want to speak this, but I have to speak it. Because there's going to be thousands upon thousands of people watch this. And over time, there'll be millions of people watch this. But somebody's watching this right now, and you have no idea. You are next in line. You're the next to go. It could be died suddenly, as we talk about. It could be sudden death, unexplainable. It could be a heart condition. It could be cancer. It could be a car wreck. It could be anything. Because we've lived long enough, I think we all have to know that at any moment, at any given time, somebody can be taken from us. So this is not a preacher trying to scare you. It is, it is, a, it is a, just a person on this screen challenging you to ask yourself one question. 
could it be me? And if it is me, if it is me, am I ready? How could I be ready? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like you preachers. I, I don't know the word of God. I don't even, I can't quote a single scripture. I'm maybe, maybe you're watching this. You've never been in church in your life. Somehow you just stopped on this. You just saw two crazy guys screaming. You said, I'm going to watch these clowns laughing and goofing off. But you couldn't turn it. You couldn't change it because something's grabbed your heart. That's, that's not something that's someone. That's the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit has got you. The Holy Spirit is drawing you. And the bottom line is this. If you are the next one or the next one after that one or the thousandth or the millionth, one day it's going to be you. The Bible promises us that. It's appointed unto man and woman once to die. And after that, the judgment. And if, you, and if the rapture takes place, it's the same equivalent as death. Because if we all are raptured, if you're not right with God, you don't go with God. You stay here to have to go through all the things that we talk about on this program. You don't want to do it. You don't want to take that chance. So whether it's the grave or whether it's the rapture, you need to know that you are right with God. Because when you're right with God, it doesn't matter what Klaus Schwab says. It doesn't matter what the World Economic Forum says. We want to know that. We're interested in that. We study that. It excites us to see more and more and more of where we're going in prophecy. But you have a peace that's unexplainable. You have something that can't be really explained because the Bible said it's a peace that passes all understanding. It don't make sense. In the middle of a poly crisis, when you have p powerful people who have unlimited resources to do whatever they want to do, to bring about anything they want to bring about, how do you sit there on screen and have a peace about it? Because you know what? The truth is the next person could very well be me, but I'm at peace because I know my heart is right with God. Remember what we read in Revelation just then? He was talking about the false prophet and he was saying he calls all to worship the beast, to worship the image of the beast. All those did it except for those whose names were written in the book of life, the Lamb's book of life. Remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, his, listen how important it is for you to be saved. It's important for you to know Bible prophecy. It's important for you to, to know all the things that Jesus promised us as believers that could happen in our life. The most important thing that he put so much emphasis on is that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. He sent his disciples out. They went out. They did miracles. They came back. He said, give me a report. And they said to Jesus, demons were subject to us in your name. Miracles happened. He went on and on and on. And listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, that's great. That's a paraphrase from Larry Raglan. But this is what he said. I quote, well, that's great that demons were subject to you in my name. But don't rejoice that demons are subject to you in my name. Rather rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. The most important thing to Jesus, the reason he came, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish to have everlasting life. And then the next verse that nobody quotes, he came not into this world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved. And that is why Paul Begley does this show. That is why when he's tired in his body, when he's preached already today, and he's, it would have been so easy for him to just sit down on that recliner like so many others do. When something breaks in the news, no matter how tired he is in his body, he's in front of you because he wants you to know. He's driven, not driven so that his face would be seen, not driven so that his subscriber account could go up. He don't even know how many subscribers he has. He don't know how many views he has. He has no idea. He don't care about that. It's so that you can know that Jesus is coming. If you don't know Jesus Christ, can I lead him right now in that prayer? Absolutely, okay. please do. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, let me show you something. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be right in every sense of the word because the Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But right before that, he said, there is none righteous. That's right. No, not one. Your righteousness is like filthy rags. But he can take those filthy rags and turn them into a remnant. Why don't you just pray that prayer with me? If you can, if you're at a place where you can stretch your hands even towards a screen, even towards your phone, if you're driving or whatever and listening to this, don't worry about it. But if you can, I want to agree my faith with you right now. Just pray this prayer. But more than anything, mean it in your heart because that's the most important thing. Because when the words come out of your mouth, it will be out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. Say this with me. Jesus, I believe 
that you died on the cross for my sins. I confess you as my Lord and Savior, and I believe that you are able to cover every sin that I've ever committed. I'm asking you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Give me the peace tonight to know that I am a child of God, and no matter what the world brings my way, no matter how bad it gets, I will lay my head on my pillow and I will rest. And I will tell my family it is well with my soul because I know that I am born again. If, and maybe you're, you walked away from God and backslidden. Then you cry out this to God. God, I'm coming back to you. I'm coming back to you, Lord. Forgive me of all that I've done when I ran away from you. Your child is coming home. I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And folks, if you just prayed that prayer with Bishop Larry Raglan, we want you to do this right now. Type in the chat room, I am saved. <laughs>